Okay, we're going to start a module on circles and this first section, 15.1, it's about central and inscribed angles. So I'll let you read the learning target there. All right, so first just an arc. So an arc is a part of the circle. It's the outside part. So that's a little arc right there. Uh, this is a little arc as well. This is an arc, so it's just the outside part of the circle. If uh, you want to talk about a semicircle, a semicircle is half the circle. So TRS, you can see where that is. That's this right here. This is half the circle. It's called a semicircle. The measure of that semicircle is 180. So we could say it's 180 degrees, it's just that when you put a measure in front of it, we just leave out the degrees, but it is 180 degrees halfway around the circle. A minor arc, we're going to use just three let or two letters for. You'll notice that the semicircle and arcs bigger than the semicircle, we're going to typically use three letters. So again, minor arc, two letters. So you can see the minor arc right here, RS. And then what's interesting is that the measure of the minor arc is going to be equal to the measure of this angle that's created right here. This is called a central angle. We'll see in a second. And it's called a central angle because the vertex of the angle is right at the center of the circle. So it's a very special, special angle measure. And it turns out that the arc measure and the angle measure here are equal to the same, you know, they're equal to the same measure. Okay, if you move over to this one on the right, the major arc that's described here is RTS. So that is this arc, RTS, and it uses three letters as well. So, and then if you wanted to uh, figure out what the measure of that is, you could take 360, which you might know is the whole circle going around. It would be 360. And then it would be minus the measure of RS, which is this uh, arc here. That's how we'd be able to figure out the measure of this arc. So we would take the whole thing, 360, and then we would subtract the RS, and that's what would get us the measure of uh, the major arc, RTS. Okay. All right, so in this one, we just want to uh, talk for a second about adjacent arcs. So adjacent arcs are arcs that are just right next to each other. So they would share a common point. So for instance, uh, this arc and this arc are adjacent arcs, and they would share that common point right there, that point A. So we're going to look for examples of a minor arc. So it's actually listed there. So a minor arc uh, one of the ones we could see, it just looks like it's, you know, less than half the circle. So this would be a minor arc, uh, arc AD. A major arc example would be one that we think, again, is bigger than 180, bigger than half the circle. So DCE would be an example. So we just start at D and we just go to our next letter C. So we go D, oops, not that way, C. So we go D and then we would go around C. E, and that's how we would know which arc we're talking about is just following the letters D and then C and then E. See, if we went the other direction, that wouldn't work. We couldn't go D and then, you know, we'd skip over the E, you know, so it doesn't make sense. And then adjacent arcs, as I mentioned, the ones right next to each other. So that would be AC and CE. And so those are listed there. All right, I mentioned a little bit ago that the, the measure of the arc is equal to the measure of its corresponding central angle. So again, central angle is whenever the vertex of the angle is right at the center of the circle. So this right here is a central angle, and it turns out that it's equal to the measure of the arc. So that's just kind of a nice, nice feature to remember. And this is how it would be stated with, you know, the geometric uh, symbols. So measure of arc AB, which is this one here, 
is equal to the measure of the angle A, C, B. And you remember how we designate angles, A, C, B. Remember that middle letter is the vertex of the angle. All right, some information here. So we have a chord. So a chord of a circle is just when the endpoints of a little segment end up on the circle. So this is an example of a chord. You could draw several chords. Let's say this was a circle and I could just draw a few chords. So that would be a chord. See how the endpoints are just right on the circle. This would be a chord. So that's what a chord is. It just has the endpoints right on the circle. All right. Then we have an intercepted arc and an inscribed angle. So here's an inscribed angle. The angle right should be pointing right to where the angle actually is. So this angle, it's called inscribed because the vertex of the angle is right on the right on the outside of the circle. And well, that's the main thing. And then the other part of the angle here is it touches, you know, the the outside of the, the circle on the opposite side. The intercepted arc is the arc that you can tell, see how the angle goes out like this and it intercepts the circle in those spots. That creates a particular arc. So this is the intercepted arc, okay? Again, if I drew a different one, I could draw this angle right here. And then the intercepted arc would be this arc right here because we start from the vertex of the angle and we go out and we see, oh yeah, it intercepts this arc right here. So that's the relationship between the intercepted arc and the inscribed angle. Okay, it turns out that the measure of the angle, so the measure of the inscribed angle is equal to one half whatever the measure of the intercepted arc is. So that's the that's the, the theorem, if you will, that we're going to utilize a lot. Okay. All right. So let's start doing some problems here. So we want to find the values of x and y. So see x down here. This is the inscribed angle and try to see what arc it's intercepting. So sometimes it helps even if you like extend the sides of the angle just to kind of see exactly which arc it's intercepting. Notice that it's intercepting the arc that is D, E, F. See how it's intercepting this arc right here, D, E, F. Well, try to figure out the measure of that arc and you can tell that it's 80, plus 70. So that means that whole arc would be equal to 150. So let's come over here and put in some answers here. So this would be one half, again, x would be equal to one half the measure of that arc, DEF, the measure of that arc. So that would be one half. And then to figure out the measure of that arc, we could just add the two adjacent arcs. So that would be 80 uh, I'll just put 80 plus, and then I'll put 70. Actually, I'll put the I'll put the degree in there. Well, actually, it says measure of DEF, so I'll take out just to be particular. I'll take out the degree measure there. So 80 plus 70. So then, if we add those together, that would be one half and 80 plus 70. So that would be 150. If I remember how to add. And then we multiply those together, so that would be 75. So we would say x equals 75. So we could even put that in there. That's 75, and then it already has the degree measure there. So that's why we wouldn't need to put the degree. Okay, then let's come over to the other side. Let's try to figure out what the measure of E, F, G is. So let's see where that is. Okay. So it looks like for this one, we have all the other measures. We have 80, 70, and 90. So remember that it would have to be this arc here would have to be 360, 360 minus each of these measures. So we could, we could figure that out. So let's see. 
So let's do let's do 360 and then we're going to subtract each of these. So I'll just do that real quick on my calculator. So just to show you, sometimes I just do some things on my calculator. So I'm going to add 150 plus 90. So that's 240. So if I add these together, that's 240. So I'm going to do 360 minus 240. And that's going to be 120. So that means this arc right here is 120 degrees. So if I want to figure out what Y is, let me just erase a bunch of this so it doesn't look so messy. Okay. So I want to figure out what Y is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend these sides here just to see what arc it's actually intercepting. So can you tell it's intercepting this arc and this arc? So these two adjacent arcs. So that is 70 plus 120. So that's going to be one half. And then the measure of EFG would be 70 plus 120. And then we could add those together. So 70 plus 120. So that would be 210. Just kidding. 110. 90. Does that sound better? Yeah. A little rusty. 1 half times 190, or just 1 half of 190. So that would be, how much would you say? 190 divided by 2. I'll just do this with my calculator. How about that? So y equals 95. Sound good? That might be what you do as well. All right. Let's find some more measures here. So notice we want to find x. So let's try to see what it's intercepting. So it's intercepting this arc. And this arc says that it's 110 degrees. So that means that x is one half of that. So the inscribed angle is one half of the intercepted arc. So we would say that is 55. Now I would normally say 55 degrees, but it already has the little degree symbol there. So we'll just say 55. All right, let's try to figure out some other measures here. So let's figure out the easiest one. Maybe the X is the easiest. So notice that the X is intercepting this arc and the arc is 90 degrees. So we're going to say that X equals half of that. So X would be 45. So 45 there. And then it looks like the Z is not too bad either. So let me kind of erase that for a second. And let's figure out the Z. So the Z looks like it intercepts this arc. And it's intercepting 170 degrees as that arc. So that means that Z, I'll do it a little out of order, that's okay. So Z would be equal to 1 half of 170. So 170 divided by 2, and that's 85. Okay. And then we can figure out the other arc because we know that the whole circle is 360. So we can just do 360 minus, and then we can add up the 170 and the 90. So that's 260. And then we can subtract those, so that would be 100. So that means that this arc here is 100 degrees. So then we can just see what see that the y angle here is intercepting that arc oops a little messy there it's intercepting this arc so that means that y would be one half of y would be one half of a hundred so y equals 50. all right a couple more just like that so let's first figure out, since this is just a little triangle, let's figure out the missing angle measure. So let's do 180 minus each of those two. So that means this is just 90. That's great because that means it's intercepting a semicircle because we know that the arc measure is actually double 
whatever the inscribed angle is. So remember how the inscribed angle is half of the arc it intercepts? So that means that the arc is double, double whatever the inscribed angle is. So that's 180. Then we'll come over here, do similar. So we know that the arc, again, is double whatever the inscribed angle is. So we can see that y would be equal to, that's this one here, y would be equal to 100. And then this one is 70. So that means it's intercepting this one. So that would be 140. And then the x would just be whatever's left out of 360. So we can see that we add those together. So that's 240. So then we can say 360 minus 240, and that'll be 120. So that means that x equals 120. All right, and then I think our last problem here, uh, it's hard to tell kind of what they're pointing at. I think they're pointing at just these little arc measures. So let's try to figure out some things. So first thing is a measure of AE. So that's a arc measure. So that's a smaller, smaller arc measure here. Let's see. Got this one here. This is AE. Sorry, I lost my brain for one second. Okay. Okay, notice that this cord is going right through the center of the circle. So that means that the arc that's associated with that, this arc here, this whole arc would be 180. But the arc that we're looking for is AE, so it's just this part. So it's missing a little piece right here. It's missing this little 10 degrees. So that means that AE is 170. So instead of 180 degrees, which would be the semicircle, it's only uh, 170 degrees because it's taken away that little 10 degrees, okay? So that means that first answer that we're looking for, AE, the measure of AE, we're gonna say is 170. Then we wanna look for the measure of angle C so that is this angle right here. So look at what it's intercepting. It's intercepting the arc AE. And AE is 170, so then just half of that. So that would be 85. And then I'm going to do measure of angle D as well. So look at how D is right here. See the vertex there? And it's intercepting that same arc. So those two inscribed angles are intercepting the same exact arc. So that means they both will be 85. And then the last one we're looking for is the measure of BEC. So let's figure out where that one is. So let me erase all this. So the measure of BEC is this angle down here. So that's, we have B and then E and then C. So that's this little guy. And we can see that it's intercepting this arc, which is 20 degrees. So that means the inscribed angle is half of the arc that it's intercepting. So it's 10. All right. So that should do it for 15.1. Just a little bit of humor. So check it out. Good luck on your practice and your assessment.